Hey, it's Tom again. This is Tom Styles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And we're tuning the band some more again tonight. The conditions seem to be pretty good. And um, I had clipped a couple of these tables out of that short uh, wave listener's guide. And one of the tables they had in there was the standard time frequencies. And there's there's more than just the ones um, you know, here at uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. There's, they're all over the world. And I'm going to try now to see, uh, see what I can pick up. And as you can see, there's quite a few of them. Some of these are uh, on the same frequency but different locations. Like uh, 2.5 megahertz is in uh, Australia, Colorado, and Hawaii. Now, again, this the book that I got this out, out of is a couple years old. So some of this stuff may be gone, maybe not be there anymore. So anyway, we're going to tune the band here and see which ones we can pick up. Here we go. Okay, that sounds like, uh, since I'm very close to the medium wave band, that sounds like stuff bleeding over from, excuse me, the medium wave band. So let's move up. Next one is at 3.33 megahertz, and that's out of Canada. I don't know why it is, but even though Canada is not too far, well, it's closer than London, England, but I typically can't get it. It may be that um, the uh, power output of that station is not that high. I typically can't get that. Sometimes I can. Again, using these, and these are, you know, standard frequencies that the weather station has to go tell me what time it is. <sighs> I'm going to have to take a drink. Cream soda. I love cream soda. Anyway, what I was about to say was that these are another set of frequencies that you can put in your shortwave radio to give you an indication of whether conditions are good for listening to shortwave. Like, for instance, if I was receiving Canada, I would say, man, conditions are pretty good tonight that I'm receiving Canada. Well, I'm not receiving Canada, so maybe conditions aren't as good as I thought they were. And let's see, the next one is 3.810. That's out of Ecuador, or was at one time out of Ecuador. Maybe it's gone. Let's go on. Four point nine nine six. That's out of Russia. Yeah, I doubt I would get that tonight if if it was even on the air anymore. And then of course we got five megahertz, which is out of Colorado. And I'm not even getting that. So moving around, and there's a whole bunch of them at five megahertz. I mean, there's like ten of them. There's India, China, South Korea. On and on and on. A bunch of them broadcast time on 5 megahertz. Okay, moving right along. Next is 7.335. That's out of Ontario. Again, because I couldn't get the other one, not surprised I couldn't get this one. Okay, 8 megahertz. That's out of Japan. So you, what you could do, if you were, if you were interested in seeing if you can receive transmissions from Asia, for instance, and you've gone on the internet and validated that this still is an active frequency, this eight megahertz for time, you could set your radio to that frequency, and since typically these. Um, time stations are brought if they're broadcasting at all 
they're broadcasting continuous. So you can set it at 8 megahertz and then go do other things and kind of listen to it. If you hear it coming through, you say, oh, now I can go tune some other stations coming from that direction. You follow? I hope so. Sometimes I don't even understand myself. Okay, here's the next one. 8.638. Nada. That's out of Australia. Usually I get Australia early in the morning. Real early in the morning. 10 megahertz. Wow, look at there. Can't even get 10 megahertz. And an hour ago, 10 megahertz from Fort Collins was coming in loud and clear. It's there. Pretty weak. Let me uh, reach over here and turn some things off. Nope. I didn't think that would help. And the reason I, reason I said I didn't think it would help because the noise I'm hearing doesn't sound like noise that usually comes from my room. From my room? I mean, things in my room. Okay, we're not even good, doing very good at 10 megahertz. Let's move up. 12.984 is out of Australia. Nah, I won't get that. Ooh. Yeah. Now that's CHU, we just said, and that's in Ontario. So even though I wasn't able to get to those other two, I'm getting this one. Actually better than I can get four columns. Yeah, it's fading out now. So that was cool. And, and a lot of it, of course, depends on conditions on what frequencies you will be able to receive at a given time. So, you know, the 31 meter might be good at a certain time of the day and then go dead and then maybe have to go up higher in, in uh, frequency to get anything. So, kind of, you know, you're, you're kind of chasing the band or chasing the stations. And like I say, using these time signals is a good way to find out if you're receiving in that area or that part of the world, in that area of the frequency band in that part of the world, so that you can try to see if you can receive international broadcast stations. See, now it's gone. It was there a second ago. Okay, moving up, there's a whole bunch of them at 15 megahertz. Sixteen megahertz comes out of Australia. They're still they come out of Australia. And then twenty megahertz, which is out of Fort Collins. And I don't hear anything. Oh, I can hear the ticks. Very weak. And then I don't know if I put in twenty five. Nope. Yeah, I did. There's twenty five megahertz, which WWV was on many years ago and they've been experimenting this past year with that frequency again. I'm not sure why they're experimenting, but right now it's not on. I can't hear it. Let's go back. Nope, it's gone again. So conditions are really changing. So anyway, I was just trying to show you another way or another tool you can use to find out what the reception conditions are at any given time. So if you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. And he's coming back again.
Okay, that's it. That's the show. Goodbye. Are you gone yet?